Previously on the Adventure Zone, Hurley says, uh, Remember, we got 15 opponents, but all we have to do is beat Sloan. Okay, I cast Levitate <laughs> on the uh, bobsled. The car just starts flipping and spinning wildly. Uh, and you see it disappear into the dust. Merle, you are pulled out of the car, and what you see almost looks like a gumball machine. Uh, And inside of the tank, you see a helpless Merle alongside a blue-spotted octopus. And now I'd like to use my second attack to attack the tank. This ball shatters. So the two of you are now hanging off of the side of the... Uh, the gumball octopus wagon. This octopus <laughs> gets two tentacles on the top of the car and is now also hanging off the side of the car. This episode's a regular stunt spectacular. Don't try this at home, kids, unless you happen to live in the Adventure Zone. Uh, Merlin Magnus, you gonna get it back up on top of this thing, or are you gonna just spend the whole time sort of <laughs> skit- skitching on your? Ooh, my goodness! I sneezed. Oh um, my! You. Was that was that in character? Or did it that was. Come out of your uh, room? I'm allergic to octopi. Um, well, it's Magnus good we know that is. now. Well, let me ask you this, Griffin: is is the now that the glass bubble has broken, is yeah. there like s- standing room? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You okay. can get up there. Then yes, I would like you can to full blown. Uh, Teen Wolf surf surf the the whip on this thing. Okay, uh, yeah, just go ahead and make a, a strength saving throw. Merle, why don't you go ahead and make one too to see if you can? Do I still have the strength of the bull? Yeah, you do. Yeah. Okay, good because that was a seven. Yeah. Hold on, oh, Dad's cool. missing something. Wait, uh, sorry. Let me borrow one of your. Uh, you missing your d twenty? So- Hold on, is Dad missing his d twenty? That's literally the only dice you need in life. He's missing all his dice. I think. Did uh, you not bring them? I just had them. Yeah. I'll I'll find them. I'll put him down. Look up your butt. Did you, did you, da, Whoa, Dad, did there, you, I Dad, locked them up. Yeah, but those were using Justin's dice. That doesn't count. Dad, did you look up your butt? Did you look up your butt? Oh, Dad, did there you look they up are. Your, there they are. There, I have told God. you this, old man. You have a microphone. If you yell again, I'm evicting you. Yes, I'm going to make you record this at your house. <laughs> uh, 18 will get you up. Uh, and Magnus, how'd you do? 22. Okay. Yeah, you both pull yourself uh, on top of the uh, on top of the wagon. The, the bottom of this wagon is sort of like a... Um, uh, sort of like a heavy, uh, like a, a troop carrier almost. It's got like these tank treads on it, uh, and it's just like a big, broad, heavy metal base uh, of of the gumball machine. But you've shattered sort of the gumball component. You Griffin, pull yourself up. I, I would like to help the octopus up. Yeah, too. you look down and you see this sort of pathetic looking octopus. Uh, six of its tentacles are just sort of waving behind it as it uses its suckers to hold on to the base of the tank. I help him up. Okay. That's good eating. Uh, you shout from thirty feet away in another yeah. car. Hey, that's, that's good eating. Uh, okay, yeah, you reach down and you grab uh, the uh, one of the tentacles of this blue spotted octopus and you pull it up. And what are you gonna do with it? Can I throw it at the drivers? Uh, they're inside a sort of enclosed tank. I mean, you can. It might spook them. I'm gonna do that. Okay, you throw it and you hear a spook as it uh, uh, suction cups. Onto the front, almost like a uh, one of those Garfields that people put up on their window. Uh huh. <laughs> it says like "Hang in there," uh, and it it doesn't seem to have any effect. They actually turn on the windshield wipers, and you see the octopus go flying off the right side of the car. Oh man, I feel bad. I feel like people are going to be upset that the octopus was, got hurt. He, he was becoming a fan favorite. Yeah, beloved uh, character. Well, uh, you guys didn't kill him, and that's rare. That's they, that's true. We Can we go back actually, and kill him? You actually, as you see him fly off in the distance, you see one of those safety bubbles pop out of his tiny octopus harness that he was wearing. Okay, so he's God. he's okay, so, everybody. Now so he is he is in the desert somewhere, <laughs> and that's not like where octopi love to be. And then we see Peta is there in the stands, and they go and retrieve him, and they make him whoa the mayor of town. Wow, Whoa. What a great ending for well, him. Well, we'll deal with that twist later. That is <laughs> not canonical okay so the two of you are, are teen wolfing on top of this uh uh battle wagon uh i it's been uh, literally a month since we last recorded so i don't remember who's next in the order 
Um, but we'll say it is taco. Okay. Um, I have, it has been literally a month since we recorded. Been literally I, I, 30 calendar days. Do we do ma- We've do, traveled 6,000 miles. I do magic, yeah. right? Like, yeah, you do magic. magic. What am I trying to achieve? Uh, I'm trying well, to stop this car. Okay. Yeah. But and Travis is on it, right? Travis and, and Dad. Is or, there like, still a wire from that car to our car, too? Yeah, you're, uh, no, there's not the claw. You cut the claw off, but you are, uh, you have a rope, tra- uh, Magnus, that is attaching you, that you tied off to the, uh, perfect, to, to the Hurley's battle wagon. Uh, free action to talk to them. Guys, what should I do? I don't want to mess this thing up too bad if you're on it. No, we, Listen. Got, we have the rope. Just, just do it. Okay, that's Magnus's uh, opinion. Unsurprising, <laughs> I'd say. Not, I could have, I could have written that one myself, Merle. Don't hurt me. Please don't hurt me. Excellent. Okay, just, great. Just aim around him. Hurley, uh, Hurley yells up from the front seat, uh, I think I can do something. Just uh, just aim for the tires. Aim for the treads. Okay. Uh, I cast... Um, magic Missile on the front, le- the, the, the front tire facing me. So I guess front okay. driver. Cool. Uh, so you don't roll an attack. You just roll damage on that. Yeah, what's that? Uh, a 1d4. A I think it's 1d4 plus 1, and you do it three times? Yeah. So, I'm guessing. That's the one with four sides. Thanks, Dad. Looks uh, like a little four, pyramid. How many times? Three times, three. right? Okay. Four, three, four. So well, then damn, plus, son! And then it's plus two? Well, plus, plus no, I, I imagine you I, added I was plus added, one each time. I was oh, added. Okay. Yeah. So that's 11 points of damage? Yeah. Uh, the the three uh, missiles uh, fly the thirty feet span between the two wagons and uh, hit the uh, the front tire. The first two don't seem to do anything, but the third one manages to sort of uh, uh, imbalance the tread that is running across that uh, that that wheel. Uh, and you hear uh, Magnus and, and Merle. You're sort of shaken up, not to an extent where you're in danger of falling off the car, but you definitely feel the wagon. Just sort of start to shudder a little bit. I, I do uh, want to use my reaction real goes, quick. Ka-chunk, 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 can I use just like reaction to like grab the back of his collar? Because I just realized I'm tied on and he is not. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll retcon that. Uh, next in the order is uh, Hurley, who uh, yells to uh, Magnus and Merle, uh, "Get ready to jump!" And what? Uh, she uh, hopes that you. What did she you, say? She hopes that she you wants did us to that. hump. What does that oh, mean? Oh, she's dirty bird. She is. Uh, yeah, I do, but that's a that's a later thing. Just kidding. <laughs> Attention, uh, fan fictioneers. No, you can't. Don't please don't burn your computer. Put your computer down the garbage disposal. Um, uh, she uh grabs the the wheel, shifts gears again. This thing's got like eighteen gears. She keeps shifting them. It's like a huffy bike. Uh, and she uh, cuts the wheel hard to the right. Uh, and uh, Taco or uh, Merlin Magnus from on top of the, the gumball battle wagon, uh, you see the <coughs> imposing shape of the uh, this, this ram horn equipped muscle car roaring at you. Uh, and uh, uh, it is approaching very, very quickly, obviously coming in at ramming speed. Looks like his. I'm going to have to jump. <laughs> oh my god, dangerous! I I am going to jump though. Okay, uh, and I'm going to take I'm going to take Merle with me. But it's not your turn. Oh, uh, no, this is a this is a special this is a special instance where I will uh, allow it. Uh, this will be uh, uh, either an athletics or an acrobatics check. You can make either one. Um, I'm gonna do athletics. If cause... you if you do this carrying carrying uh, uh, Merle, then you're gonna be at a disadvantage because you're jumping a distance holding another person. I look at Merle. I'm like, can you? What's your athletics and your? Uh, well, I guess I wouldn't say. How good are you at jumping? You look at him and you have a look in your eyes. Like, can you jump, dog? <laughs> your dog. Hey, hey, how's your ups? You jump? Um. Uh, well, I'm a. Sc- Stubby legged little dwarf. So, yeah. uh, but that doesn't mean anything. Well, I got zero dexterity. That's uh-huh. not a lot of dexterity. Two strength. Hey, all right. 
And do you have a little bubble marked in next to athletics or acrobatics? I have a bubble marked in next to athletics, and it's plus four. Yeah, dog, you're good. You're going to be fine. Okay, you go first, then. <laughs> okay. Wait a minute. That way There's I gotta can be save a smarter you way you, to do this. You have a you're jumping onto a car that is driving at ramming speed toward the car that you are currently standing on. You're both jumping simultaneously. You don't have time to Okay, so Curly she's, is ramming you. She's ramming us. Right, yeah. And I'm jumping towards a vehicle coming towards us. Yeah. That's doing the math on the vehicle. And I'm not tied to, jump. to anything. If one battle wagon going 90 miles an hour departing from Chicago. Right, okay, I'm rolling. Let's do this. I'll roll. I'll go. I'll go. All right. All right. I got rolled a 19. <laughs> Holy shit. I rolled a one. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, maybe I do take him with me. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, You go ahead. We're here. Go, go for it. Well, I uh, rolled a 19, so. What? Do- of course you did. Uh, what dice? Well, I rolled a 12 plus my seven, so. Go ahead. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Uh, so basically, I just kind of hopped up in the air about six inches and came right back down. Yeah, you didn't really do much anything there, huh? Wonk. Magnus, you effortlessly float through the air like a leaf uh, and land on the back of the wagon and get your hand on one of those safety railings at the top of the car, uh, which All is good. All while drinking a cup of tea. Yeah, do I you, see, okay. Ups, so, upside down. Okay, as I see, is is he flown... What, yeah, you know what? It's not if everybody else gets a special round. Taco, you also get a special round here to see if you I can need unfuck to react. this situation. I'm going to react though after I see uh, uh, what's ha- like. What is is Merle in danger? Yes, Merle okay. is upside. Down. We're in slow mo time right now. Bullet. Okay. Um, okay. Merle is upside down. He jumped way too early and not very far, and he he has basically jumped and is now floating in the air. Uh, and it looks like he's going to land in front of Hurley's battle wagon. I focus all my energy and wait for the fucking spell that I've been wanting to cast and has not had the opportunity to until just this moment. As a bolt of light erupts from the Umbra staff and underneath of Merle appears a phantom steed. <laughs> What the fuck? Whoa! That's, what? that's right. A, what? A large what? quasi-real horse-like creature appears on the ground. I'm sorry, read that description one more time. A large quasi-real horse-like creature appears on the ground. <laughs> I decide the creature's appearance so it looks like a beautiful unicorn. It's got a big unicorn horn and rainbow Holy colors. His, his name is Garrel. It's like Gary and Daryl mixed together. Oh I've done God. more character work on Garrel than I did on Taco. Holy shit. And Garrel, in, like you can hear Erasure, like just a, a floating through the wind. <laughs> and like Garrel appears underneath Merle. And with a whinny, with a perfectly tonal whinny that raises through the octaves. <laughs> Garrel appears below Merle. <laughs> Catching him effortlessly. Yeah, Ow. Merle, you kind of you're flying head first towards the ground in front of the battle wagon, and this spectral unicorn appears in front of you, and oh. you almost do like a ring around its uh, the uh, the rosy around its neck. Because uh, oh, I forgot one thing. His, his mane is like more of a mullet, but he is making it work. Okay. That's the most amazing thing about Garrel. Oh. And you get two two hands full of mullet, and yeah. Garrel. Uh, Garrel very quickly hops out of the way of this speeding vehicle, uh, a- avoiding a second death. And now you are riding on the back of a spectral. This game is fucking ridiculous. You are holding on to the back of a spectral unicorn. It's uh, like riding Billy Ray Cyrus. Uh, <laughs> it's exactly like that. And you get out of the way just as Hurley uh, puts one of the uh, the the gigantic silvery chrome ram horn on the front right of the battle wagon into the front left tread that Taco just disrupted. Oh. Uh, and the tread just goes flying off those uh, off those wheels on the left side. Uh, and Hurley corrects and, and gets to the left, sort of getting out of the way of what happens next, which is the, the, the tank base of, of this gumball octopus battle wagon uh, sort of like starts to veer to the left, and then it corrects too much to the right, 
and then it just flips basically over its side uh, that you busted the treads off of and goes spinning wildly, uh, dangerously back into the, the dust cloud behind you where you can't see it. And you actually see Hurley like look back and go like, God, I hope, I hope they're okay. They had those bubbles. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you see a giant, giant, giant explosion uh, piercing through the dust cloud behind you. And then you hear three horns blast uh, from, from the pylons on either side of the course. And Hurley goes, <laughs> Ooh. Well, We're going to prison. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Well, that was an accident. So, uh, Yikes. let's, uh,. We'll talk. We'll unpack that later. She says. Uh, okay, so now you're back. Uh, hey, if you need to hide the bodies, we have a cool spot. <laughs> what do you mean? Nothing. Uh, no, I okay, kind of misspoke. Uh, Merle, are you going to stay on this? How long does your unicorn last? For God. an hour. Handle it. <laughs> and also, he has a name, and it's Geralt. It's so Geralt. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to get off Geralt. I feel like I'm in an old spice commercial. Justin, okay. I don't want to critique your gameplay, but why the fuck has it taken you 25 episodes <laughs> yeah. to summon Geralt? Well, is this Geralt a- is a thir- first off, it had to be the right moment, and I believe that was it. Yeah. Secondly, Geralt is a third level incantation. is very taxing on me. <laughs> <laughs> you need to take a quick nap and eat a power bar. Yeah. 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 I need you to re energize and recarb. You are exhausted. Okay. Um, well, I didn't. It might surprise the three of you to learn that in planning this whole race encounter, I never factored in the fact Geralt. that Taka might summon Geralt, the spectral <laughs> unicorn. But well, I'm just right alongside of you, like uh, almost yeah, like I'm a, well. The a guard. Pro- the problem is going to be this: that we have to. Uh, this is this is probably too nitpicky for our game, but like, what speed are the battle wagons going at? Because like, approximately, approximately Geralt mile, miles per hour. Geralt miles an hour? Perfect, okay. I'm not going to... Are you kidding me? I'm not going to, like... I'm not going to ruin your fantastical visions with with a thing as, like, ridiculous as speed differentials. No (laughs) way. Physics. Yeah. Also, it's a quasi-real horse-like steed. Like, are we really going to get into physics? He's running very, very fast. It's a magical unicorn horse. I don't know that math applies. Um, All right. Okay. Uh, So, you just heard three, three horns. You're up to 11. And remember, there's 16 wagons total, including yours. Oh, okay. Um, and the the raven is still ahead of you uh, a good distance. Um, and in fact, uh, uh, f- just a few short moments after you hear that massive explosion and the three horns that followed, uh, your battle wagon emerges from this dust cloud that you have been sort of pushing through the entire race. Uh, and you do see the raven's winged longboat uh, just ahead, um, it's about a, it's about a hundred yards uh, ahead of you, um, kicking up a, a straight line of dust as it sort of hovers over the desert. Um, hey Griffin, yeah. Can I just say real quick? This is like a really good D and D campaign you've this written. I just Thank to you. Say, I just realized like I was sitting here just like on the edge of my seat, like <laughs> adrenaline fueled. Like, all right, well, oh yours. Thank you. Say, Thank you. You've done well, a really great it's job. It's you. It's you guys that make the magic in me. Let's no, wait and see how it ends, though, because, like, Lost seemed pretty good, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Um, so you um, see the you see the raven uh, about 100 yards ahead of you. Um, are we in second place? Yeah, you're. It, it, it seems like you are in second place. You don't see any cars in front of the raven, or wagons. Okay. Not cars. Cars don't exist. Is Penelope um, Pit Stop somewhere behind us? Yeah, Dick Penelope. Dastardly. She's the final. Dick Dastardly is the final boss. Um. <laughs> Uh, uh, about um, a mile ahead of you and, and slightly off to the right, you see the sun sort of uh, shimmering off of the skyline of Gold Cliff, uh, which, remember, this racetrack dead ends. Uh, the, the finish line is basically right up flush against the, uh, against the cliff that Gold Cliff is built around. So uh, you know that you are getting pretty near to the, to the finish line. Um, and uh, uh, Hurley yells from the front seat, uh, Taco, get ready uh, on, on the harpoon. We're still a little bit out of range. Um, but, but, but we're going to be able to, to nab her here really quick. Just, just stay frosty, she yells. Okay, yeah, frosty indeed. And listen, don't uh, forget the big red button. Yeah. 
There's also a big red button, but that's, uh, Merle, that's in your, uh, well, it was in the front seat. Somebody's going to have to lean up and hit that when, when the time because calls for now it, I'm on Daryl. 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 Please. Daryl. There's a second. Oh, my God. Okay. Is there a second ghostly unicorn? No, it's just Daryl. His name is Derry. Can Geralt die? I just need to know the narrative stakes. Geralt is unkillable. Holy shit. Well, hold on. Let me see. Is, oh wait, yeah, hold on. Is that just what your heart tells you? Uh, I mean, he's quasi-real. Like, what would you do to him? He's spectral. Like, no. You would, you would have to hit him with, like, um, I'm just, some kind it, of positron beam. I just want the three of you to know I am more invested in Geralt than I am in any of your three characters. And <laughs> so, like, the, if somebody's going to I'm willing to, to make, bet the audience is as well, Griffin. If somebody's yeah. going to make, like, a brave sacrifice, I want it to be Geralt. Does that make right. sense? Because I feel like people are going to... Anyway. Um, I just Geralt's feel like, like Steven a... is getting really jealous of Geralt at this point. Because I think, like, you know, it's it's like... Uh, who was the cute kid that they brought on Brady Bunch? Uh, Leonardo oh, DiCaprio? Yeah. Nope, that was Growing Pains. Did I mention he can talk? He can also talk. What? No, no, no. I'm not doing a voice for Geralt. I know I control Geralt. <laughs> Don't be stupid. <laughs> Wait, you Geralt's... want to voice an NPC? This is, this is unorthodox. He's not an what? NPC. He's an MPH. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Neil Patrick Harris. <laughs> That's the voice. Yeah, yeah. No. And everybody, please welcome to the show Neil Patrick Harris. Uh, Hi, everybody. Uh, uh, what a pleasure to be here. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it's me, Neil Patrick Harris. He's a wizard. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, we've we've put off <laughs> we've put off the story for too long. Um, from from behind you, you hear a bestial roar. Clark. Uh, no, it's actually, uh, you see, uh, push its way out of the dust cloud that you just emerged from. Uh, you see a gigantic armored boar <gasps> with two, uh, tusks that, uh, seem to have been, like, sort of, uh, shaved down to be, like, these serrated, uh, blades on, on the front of its face. This, this boar is a little bit bigger than your battle wagon. It is That's ginormous. A big boar. It's a big old boar. Big and it, boar. It, it in character Magnus looks back and smiles really big. Uh, he likes the idea of fighting a giant metal boar. Uh well it's not just a giant metal it's 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 not a metal boar, it's armored. Uh, it's not a robo boar. Uh although oh, shit, man. that would have been cool. Um no, it's it's a real boar and it's armored and uh it's got these sharp tusks and it's pulling uh it's sort of like a big chariot uh with two riders who are also wearing boar masks. Um, and they, they pull out of the dust cloud and they're gaining speed on you coming up quick. Um, uh, and they're, they're sort of behind you and to the left. Behind you and to the right, another wagon emerges from the dust cloud. Uh, and this one is sort of perplexing. It just almost looks like the big shipping crate that you guys were in at the beginning of the race. Like, it, it looks like it's just a big shipping crate. Uh, a big red shipping crate that uh, is, is if it has wheels, you can't see them. They might be underneath the shipping crate. But it is just sort of moving moving along, and you don't see any holes in it. You don't see anything. It's just like this. Wheels? Uh, is it gliding? Uh, uh, it, we can't you, it's, tell? You can't tell. Uh, it is off the ground. Uh, but this shipping crate is also coming up quick uh, to, to the right side. You can't sort of – there's no discernible means of propulsion on this crate. It's just a big crate coming up through the wasteland. Uh, uh, ditto. How long do I have to wait before I can jump on the chariot? <laughs> uh, well, you have to wait until your turn. Ugh. I hate uh, this game. <laughs> yeah, it's a stupid game. <laughs> uh, stupid game with turns. Uh, okay. So is this all the same encounter? Oh, yeah, boy. No oh, boy. sleep till. Damn. Uh, okay. Uh, we're back at the top of the order, Merle, uh, and I, I suppose Garrel. Uh, we'll say we'll say you you have sort of free movement uh, with Garrel within reason. Um, so you are riding Garrel. You feel a, a tight bond with him, uh, holding and holding on to his mane. Garrel turns back to you and says, "What's next, little man?" Oh, I like oh, the voice. Shit, that's, that's what Garrel sounds like. Okay, Garrel's badass. Yeah, he's great. Well, he's seems a- to me. That we've got two opponents left before we make a run on Raven, right? Yeah, listen, here's my plan. Let- <laughs> listen, listen, listen. You're a loose cannon, Carol. Listen, listen, I got a plan. Let's go eat some oats. 
spectral oats. <laughs> New Stoke spectral Stoke. oats. They're enriched with fiber and shit. No, 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 no. You're cool. What's up, though? Let's attack. Yeah. The armored boar. Hell yeah. And uh, and see what we can do. What kind of damage we can do. Fuck that shit up. Hell yeah. <laughs> You're just a little man, though. You got a gun or something? Because I don't know. I got better than a gun. Okay. I got a, a three fifty seven bi- Magnum. The a, most powerful no. handgun. That there. is a gun. That's a That's gun. That's a gun. <laughs> I am going to. I'm going to cast guiding bolt. Hell yeah! yeah I'm, okay. I cast guiding bolt. You don't have to say that character. I don't think. I don't. I don't think so. I think you just do it. Well, you were well, doing you characters. Have say, you have to say it in Latin. <laughs> if so, boltus guiding us. Yeah. Uh, that's a, a Harry time. Potter spell. All right. I tell you what, I'm going to do though. Okay. If you change your mind from the guiding bolt. No, I'm going to cast guiding bolt. Okay. But I'm going to cast it on the connection between the armored boar and the chariot, whatever okay, it's holding it. It's sort of a big uh, wooden truss. Mm. Is that the word? Travis, I can't. I heard you gasp. I just need to reiterate here. Your Only axe trees. works on trees. Only trees. Not yep, all yep. wood. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, it's thick. It's like a, it's like a gigantic. Like a tree? Like a tree? Log. Not like a tree. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cast Guiding Bolt. Right, I cast two d eight. Right. Well, you have to uh, you either do it. You're either making a range attack, or the thing gets to make an evasion attack. Well, it's a range. It says ranged attack. Okay, then you're going to roll a d twenty, and you're going to add your uh, spell casting modifier to it. And fifteen. You roll a fifteen. Yes. Yeah. So twenty. Okay. Yeah, that's a 21. that's going to be a hit on this this wooden connector. All right, and now I roll two d eight plus two. Okay. So seven to nine, five, seven, sixteen altogether. Sixteen. All right. Yeah. You cast guiding bolt, uh, and a, a, a shimmering arrow of light uh, flies out of your extreme teen bible, uh, and with a kunk, just sort of connects with this big thick wooden connector between the uh, the wagon and the uh, uh, the boar. Uh, it, it didn't destroy it or anything like this, but the, uh, the, the wooden connector is now sort of glowing, uh, because Guiding Bolt also has another effect on it, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It's, it, uh, be- before the end of the next turn, the, no, it doesn't have anything else. It just glitters. <laughs> oh, I thought it helped other people, I thought it helped other people attack Oh, I'm sorry, object. yeah, you're right, before the end of your next turn, the next person has advantage. Thanks yeah. to the mystical dim light glittering on the target. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next in the order uh, is the crate, which is just going to accelerate and uh, uh, pull up about uh, 20 feet to the right of your battle wagon. Uh, and that is all that uh, they are going to do. Uh, next in the order is Merle. Uh, Merle, because I know you like jumping. Merle just went. Oh, I'm sorry, Magnus. Um, okay. uh, because I know you like jumping. The crate is about 20 feet off to your right. Uh, it's significantly taller in stature than the wagon you're on. So jumping on it, that would be a tricky, a tricky maneuver. Uh, the mm-hmm. boar wagon hasn't really accelerated up to being sort of uh, uh, adjacent to, to the wagon. It's still lagging behind you. Uh, always. Have you snapped yourself back into the the rails? By the way. Uh, sure. <laughs> I may undo that here in a moment. Okay. Uh, all right. It's it's your turn. Uh, there's not really much in jumping distance. Um, unless you wanted to try for the crate, which would be tricky. Um, but otherwise, it's it's your turn. Um, you know what? I I'm just gonna do basic and pull out my bow and aim for one of the guys driving the. Uh... The boar car. Ditto. The attack that Merle did on the thing was it like? Oh, it cracked three quarters no. of the way through. No, it's a, it's a, it's a big, big, big chunk of wood. It's gonna be hard to, it's gonna be hard to break off. Certainly, you, you, I, I'll guarantee you won't do it with a, an arrow. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, aim an arrow at the, uh, at the. Uh, uh, one the, of the drivers. So okay, so there's two riders. One of them has a big old two-handed scimitar on him, 
uh, like like really big, like uh, like dude sized, uh, and the other one has a, a pretty imposing looking crossbow, almost like the one that uh, Killian wields. Ooh, and I can't jump to them yet. No, they're way, they're way, they're pretty far behind. They're about a to, to as the crow flies, they're about uh, they're about forty feet away from you. You know what? I'm gonna ready in action then, and just like crouch down and get ready to jump. When they get close enough. Do you just want to delay your turn? Uh, is delay my turn? Is that the same as, like, when they, then I? No, no, no. Uh, that's ready in action. Delay your turn is you just take yourself out of the order, and then whenever you want to get back into the order, you just say, I want to go now, and then you go. Well, but I want... Uh, I get, yeah, okay, then I'll do that. Okay. Uh, next in the order is the boar wagon. Uh, I want to go now. <laughs> well, no. Oh no! Wait, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's too soon. It's too uh, soon. so the uh, they do accelerate up, uh, pretty much uh, adjacent with the car and unicorn. Um, uh, the guy with the big crossbow is going to launch a shot at you, Magnus. Okay. Uh, he rolled twenty three. I mean, yes. Yeah. But hold on, I can do stuff. Oh yeah, you have your Fletcher's mitt. Yeah, I do have that, but, but that just gives yet. you plus one AC, I think. Yeah. Well, that's not melee attack, though, is it? No, it's nope. okay. Okay, yeah. Sorry. I'm oh rolling. man, I'm rolling like shit. Yeah. Uh, eight points of damage. Nice. Uh, big old big old crossbow bolt comes in and catches you in the shoulder. Uh, for for eight. Uh. The uh, rider with the scimitar is going to ready in action. Uh, well, now and, hold on. <laughs> and the uh, boar <laughs> is going to uh, attack uh, the Garel uh, Merle hybrid be- beast. Wait, so the boar is sentient? Yeah, it's a boar. But you said it wasn't a. Ro- oh, it's a. Pl- okay, I got you. It's an armored, like, mammal boar, not like an armored engine, which is what I thought you meant. No. I no, thought it was like a boar shaped engine. Is a, this is a case of hearing hoof prints and thinking robotic zebra. What are you talking about? I wanted it to be a boar shaped engine, Griffin. I got very excited, and it was not that. It's fine. We're dealing in a oh world with God. hamster wheels and octopi and giant. I don't know. Uh, oh, I thought that I thought it was like somebody who was going to come up to you and whip out their phone and show you the pictures of their trip to Napa Valley. That's pretty good, Jake. That actually sounds fascinating, Dad. Yeah. Um, that was a fourteen. I'm guessing that's not going to hit you, Merle. Woo! Dodge. C- can you confirm or deny? Oh what your, yeah. Uh, what's your AC number? My AC number is twenty. No, not so holy shit. Twenty one. No, not possible. Uh, where no, are we? Mine, mine's only 17. It's 18. Impossible. 18. 18. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, Justin, what's Geralt's AC? Infinite. <laughs> this is this can't be. Well, let's take a let's take a break and and go to the commercial break and during that we're going to suss out some numbers vis-a-vis <laughs> Geralt. <laughs> Hey everybody, this is Griffin McElroy, your Dungeon Master, your best friend, and your dad. Yep, I have been your dad this entire time. I know this might come as a shock to you, um, but thank you very much for listening to episode 25 of The Adventure Zone. Not a lot to talk about in this commercial break of The Adventure Zone, uh, but we do have a few personal messages. If you want to get a message on the show, a shout out to a friend or loved one or family member like me, your dad, uh, then you can go to MaximumFun.org slash Jumbotron and find out how to get up on this podcast. Let's kick things off with a message for AJ from Andy, who says, Remember that time we were playing D&D and you were wrapping up an epic two-year campaign? You impressively wove your words describing the destruction of the god-killing Emerald Sword, and I interrupted you with a monstrously beautiful eight-second-long fart. Well, this is my public apology to the best DM ever. Thanks for the heads up on this podcast. Try not to feel too bad about that, uh, Andy. Um, happens to a lot of people, specifically on this podcast. Uh, but fortunately, we can edit those out. Uh, thank you 
to Audacity for giving me that opportunity. Here's another personal message. This one's for Amy, and it's from Charlie, who says... Happy birthday, darling. I'm still absolutely delighted by your interest in D&D and can't wait to start our campaign. May the grace of Bring Brong lead our jerf quest on to glory. Hopefully the shitty peanut doesn't piss all over your headphones before you have a chance to hear this. I love the hell out of you, Ames. Let's keep having fun together. Um, I don't know... I don't know which of that is in the real world and which of that is in the game world. I don't know if if one of your characters is actually a shitty peanut that pisses all over headphones. Um, But that kind of sounds like a dog. I don't know. I don't want to I don't want to assume. Um, But have keep having fun. Hang in there, you two. And keep on living. Here's one more message. It's for Tiny Amy. And it's from Mike. It is specifically written here with an exclamation point, and then that the exclamation point is important. So, Mike says, Congratulations on the triple occasion of your birthday, your new teaching career, and your first D&D session as the DM. I am sorry that my character spent most of that game with a psychoactive frog in his mouth. Hopefully that is one challenge you will not have to face in the classroom. (laughs) Good luck. Man, Dungeons & Dragons is such a good game. It's like an infinite world of possibilities. It's like Monopoly if everybody was just making shit up all the time. Uh, But congratulations, Tiny Amy, on your triple threat. um, And good luck teaching the future of the world. I want to say thanks to everybody who's been tweeting about the show using the the Zonecast hashtag. Uh, We got probably another episode in this story arc, and then we're going to move on to something else. Uh, So if you want to maybe get a name... In the next story arc, be immortalized as a character in the Adventure Zone world. Uh, just tweet about the show using the, the Zonecast hashtag. Um, if you if you haven't done so and, and you really enjoy the show, if you wouldn't mind sharing it with a friend, uh, even if they don't play D&D, we have a lot of people who listen who don't play D&D. Uh, it's got crossover appeal, as they say, in the industry. Um, if, if you could help us spread the word, because we don't pay a cent to like market the show or anything, that would be bonkers. I wouldn't even know how to start doing that. Uh, but yeah, just, just try and help us spread the word about the show. We we really appreciate it. Oh, if you can uh, rate and review us on iTunes, too, that also really helps. I know, like, every podcast in the world asks you to do that, but it really is very helpful. Uh, my apologies for, on the last episode, telling you the wrong date that we were going to be doing our next episode. I'll try and do better uh, this time. The next one is going to be up November 5th. November 5th. 14 days, two calendar weeks from now, November 5th, is when the next episode will be up. I really hope you enjoyed the uh, Flophouse uh, episode. It was a lot of fun to listen to. Uh, but we're back, uh, and we're energized after our month off, and we're ready to ready to get back to heroism and shit like that. But, uh, yeah, thank you all so much for listening. Next episode's up on November 5th, and I will talk to you then. Bye. follows like the the you know in terms of like his speed and shit like that he is a horse but like it doesn't say anything about like vulnerabilities or anything. We are if, I may, something. if i may pitch something here what if garrel is an extension of taco's spirit he's the he's the bold cool like calm collective part of taco's spirit and so all of his resistances are the same as what's that called on harry potter the it is patronus yeah okay Okay. yeah we'll allow that well then Um, we have to have the classic battle i need i'll have to rush (laughs) garrel at the boar we have to uh Uh, well it's a you can maybe try that on your turn Um, jurassic park style (laughs) sure uh next in the i will be going now okay next thing orders magnus I meant to say, of course, it's Magnus. I, I would like to jump onto the chariot. Okay. By doing this, you are leaping over Geralt, which is going to look pretty yeah. fucking sweet, actually, now that I think yeah. about it. Okay. It's got to be in slow-mo, too. All slow-mo. of this, all of this, this whole thing, by the way, has all been in slow-mo. Oh, wow. All right, so acrobatics. No, athletics. That's what I'm good at. And these are all real effects. I mean, none of this is That's, CGI, guys. Yeah, no, <laughs> this is no all pra- work. This is all this practical. Is real. Um, this is all I rolled camera. a 13 plus 7 at 20. Yeah, 20 will do it. Uh, you hop onto this battle wagon. Uh, as you land, the guy with the scimitar is going to take a swing at you. Uh, you. You have activated his ready to action. I figured. Uh, 16? 
Versus AC? Yup. That is a miss. My AC is 17. Okay, he swings just a second too early. Um, I am going to use... He cuts He cuts some gum off of the bottom of your shoe. That is how near the miss was. I'm going to use repost. When a creature misses you with a melee attack, expend a superiority dice to make a melee attack against that creature. If you hit, add superiority dice, which is a D6. Okay. Although somebody tried to explain to me on Twitter that it was a D8, if that is correct, I apologize. I'm going to keep rolling a D6, because it's what it says in my helpful booklet I made. Why would it say D6 plus 2 if it's D8? I don't understand. It sounds yeah. like a lie. Yeah. It sounds like you yeah. were maybe lied to. Let's maybe go with the rule book and not what the liar said. Okay. So, melee attack. My battle axe. Oh, that's 14 plus 7. 21. 21 is a hit. Great, and then I roll D... Okay, so the damage is D8. Six. Plus six, 12, plus two. So 14 points of damage. Uh, yeah, 14 points of damage. Okay, the you, you hit this guy hard, uh, and you stagger him backwards. Um, and he, he pitches backwards and bumps into the guy with the... Uh, Bumps into the guy that was holding the crossbow, uh, and, and as you sort of knock them backwards to the side of the to the side of the wagon, uh, they actually sort of tilt the the reins of this boar a little bit, and and the wagon moves away from the uh, from from your battle wagon. You're about uh, you're about forty feet away from them now. Cool. Um, so now my turn. Yeah, you get to do two attacks. Can I, Griffin? Yeah. Real talk. Yeah. Can I throw one of them off the chariot? If you beat them in a strength contest. I've got strength of bull, and I'm feeling real pumped up. I got the Red Bull coursing through my veins. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. That's what Red Bull... By the way, this week's episode is brought to you by Red Bull. It lets you throw people. I'm going to throw... <laughs> I'm going to throw Scimitar Guy off the chariot. Okay. Uh, you got them both up sort of against the ropes on the, the far side of this chariot. Um, That's a 16. That's a 15. Plus strength seven, so twenty three. Okay. Uh, yeah. Also a hit, or no? I'm sorry. There's a strength contest, isn't it? Yes, I'm throwing him. Uh, I rolled a nineteen, which would have been good normally if you didn't have that fucking Red Bull coursing through your veins. You're you so powerful. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you are going to just sort of pick him up uh, over your head with your bull strength and chuck him. Um, it gives you away. Uh, which direction are you chucking him? I am. I am chucking him. Uh, this is important. Chuck him in between, so he falls under the wheels. God, no! I don't want to kill him. I'm gonna him. I'm gonna throw him away from. Oh my. The action. What okay. has happened to this? So, team? like, to the left, away from your battle wagon. Yes. Okay. Uh, he's gonna make a dexterity saving throw to see if he can grab the side. Oh, he can't. He <laughs> super can't. Okay, yeah. You chuck the scimitar wielding guy uh, off the wagon, and you hear a boom, boom, boom as his uh, bubble deploys, and you see him fly off. Great. My second attack. Oh, yeah. my God. Um, and so then many I'm going to use disarming strike uh, against the guy with the uh, crossbow. Crossbow. Okay. Yeah. That's 11 plus 7, 18. Uh, that does not do it. Really? Yup. Nice. I know. It, sometimes things happen that you try something and it doesn't work. 18? Yeah, bro. Doesn't work? Okay, fine. You're level fine. six now. This is, how yeah. we, this is how we do. All right, fine. <laughs> I threw one of them off. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, and the guy with the crossbow, it was the one like with the reins, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, you see, uh, you, you you do your second attack and it doesn't go as great, but you can still sort of see the scimitar guy like bouncing around behind you, um, and he's sort of bouncing backwards towards the dust cloud that you guys emerge from, and uh, you actually see him get hit by a massive, massive battle wagon that emerges from the dust cloud. Son of a bitch. It is a gigantic tank in the shape of a shark. Oh, yeah, those guys from like a month and a half ago. Uh, yeah. It's got razor-sharp teeth. It's got a cannon 
on top. Uh, it uh, it doesn't seem to have any sort of uh, like window to the to the cockpit. It seems like we're gonna this, need a bigger cart. The gigantic uh, uh, shark tank is. By the way, I didn't realize that I made a shark tank like the show. Somebody pointed out on Twitter, like, hey, great joke. I was like, what are you talking? Oh, my God, yes. Um, <laughs> it is a great joke. Yes, uh, I did. Shark Tank, uh, you see it emerge from the dust cloud behind you, uh, and its mouth opens up, and this big, uh, uh, pointy uh, spear with these, like, sharp, like, fangs coming out of it starts spinning inside of its mouth. Remind me, they like us or they don't like us? <laughs> Uh, next in the order is Merle. Uh, you're still next to the wagon. Uh, the boar wagon is to your left, but it, it got pulled away, uh, pretty far away. You got the shark tank behind you, and you got the crate to your right. Hmm. All right. I am going to... First, I'm going to pet Geralt affectionately. Yep. Okay, that's your turn. That. Plus two. And that's Thank your turn. You. That's a free no, it's action. not. No, that's a free action. No, that's a free idea. action. You get I inspiration. Do, I do appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah. You're welcome. I am uh, going to... Uh, I'm going to cast Spiritual Weapon at the uh, one charioteer still remaining. Okay. What does that do? It just makes it's him... It's a floating spectral weapon... Uh, you, it's, uh, you can make a melee spell attack against a creature within five feet. I'm not within five feet. No, homie. Yeah. You're not within eight five feet. You can get over there. Where is he at? You can definitely get over there. Is he back on my cart? Well, I'm on no. Geralt, too. Yeah, yeah he's on Geralt. Geralt. Yeah, can yeah, Geralt make a Geralt. move towards him so I can get yeah, for within sure. striking distance? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's no problem. Yeah, I'm, I'm counting Geralt's movement as your, your movement. Abs. Geralt, get me there. Absolutely. Okay. You got a range of 100 feet, homie. That's no problem. Holy right. shit. That's insane range. I'm a horse. Okay. Uh, so the horse, Geralt. Uh, is it a horse or a unicorn? Because we keep interchanging. Unicorn. He's a unicorn. I'm, I look like a unicorn. But it's just a glandular condition. But it's a spectral. <laughs> I mean, I'm a I'm spe I have no. I'm whatever Taco wants me to be. Whatever he wants me to look like. Okay. Look, well, look, look at him right now. And Taco flicks his wrist, and Geralt has a second horn all of a sudden. Check, holy shit. Check so that now he's shit in, out. Okay, so we have a word for those, actually. That's a deer. No, 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 no. He's got one have, on his nose like a rhino and one on his it's head. It's a binocorn. Like deer, don't, I'm a binocorn. I got two rainbow colored horns coming off of me, and it's amazing. Hell yeah. Okay. Geralt the binocorn. All right, Geralt the binocorn runs you, uh, Merle, over uh, adjacent to the boar wagon. Um, the two of you are over there. And I cast Spiritual Weapon. Okay. <clears throat> so it's... So like the power of prayer? So that's 18. So if it's a melee attack, I add strength to it, right? So I add two to that. So that's 20. Nice. Okay, yeah, that's a, it's going to be a hit. Nice. And good math. Thanks for a change. What is your so, spirit weapon? What does your spirit weapon look like? Uh, it looks like a big tennis racket with a waffle iron on the front of it. Nice. What is yeah. that even? Okay. Wait. What? <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. It could have been. It could have been anything. And what yeah. you did. What you did was like the craziest homemade home defense <laughs> implement exactly. I've ever heard and of. It's very and then Kevin Joe from, Pesci. It falls on Joe it's Pesci. Home alone. <laughs> it's absolutely <laughs> home alone. And it's real hot, so it's going to leave an impression on his face. Yeah, it looks like Buzz's tarantula. All right. So I roll D eight. Oh. Two D eight. Oh plus shit. Plus two. So it's two times. Oh, so that's eight plus two. Plus so that's ten. twenty. Yeah. Twenty so points of damage. Do 20 points of damage with my waffle iron. Uh, yeah, he, uh, you, you conk him down on the head, and he uh, goes completely unconscious and falls backwards off the wagon, and you see his bubble deploy. Boom, boom, boom. And the side of his he head looks off. like Archie, right? Yeah. Uh, as he uh, falls off the wagon... Can I grab the range, or is it... The, uh, the, uh, it's not your turn. The, uh, oh, no. the boar actually seems enraged that you have conquered... It's two riders, uh, and he lets out another bestial roar, but it's not his turn. It is, in fact, shit boar. 
I feel like I haven't taken a turn since the last time the crate moved. Uh, did I skip you, Taco? I think yes. you skipped me, my dude. I'm sorry. Yeah, you should have gone before. Turns. You should have gone before Merle. That's all okay. right. Uh, Taco, it is your turn. Uh, I have no we'll, idea. We'll, what we'll, to we'll do. drop. We'll drop you in now. The the boar is f- fucking super angry. Okay. You got the shark tank behind you, spinning up something nasty, and you got the crate to your right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, I like. I guess I should. Uh, man, the crate seems w- though mysterious rather non-threatening yeah the crate's just kind of like i'm not gonna attack the crate crate is chilling for all we know uh it could be full of like stuffed animals yeah i was thinking about um okay that's jaws music is making it hard to think stop it <laughs> nope uh <laughs> next time he does it that's the only way I'll learn. Squirt him with a spray bottle. This is you're costing us thousands, tens of thousands of millions, tens of thousands of dollars. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I think I'm gonna cast. I'm just gonna cast fireball on the boar. I don't know. Yeah, it seems probably pretty good. Yeah, it seems like a good thing to do. Yeah, I'm just gonna cast fireball on the boar. Okay. Cause, because I, I the the shark is serious, but I think we're closer to being able to deal with this boar situation. Is the, is the shark right behind the boar? Oh no, you're way. Jerry? It's 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 pretty far back. All it right, literally uh, it just came out of that dust cloud that you emerged from like thirty seconds ago. So, so you, you pretty, have to make it. Uh, the boar has to make a dexterity saving throw. Oh my god! Well, let me do my trick with those hooves. How much dexterity modifier it gets? That's a two. It's a fun, fun, fun tip for you at home DMs. Just roll a D four and use whatever number. It's a quick little shortcut. Yeah, uh, thirteen. Okay. So now I roll a D twenty. No, you got a. It's your spellcasting modifier. It happens to me all the time. What's your yeah, intellect? What's your intel? What's your intelligence? To... What's your intelligence? My intelligence is plus uh, off the chart seventeen. And it's a bonus of plus, three. Plus three. Okay. Plus three. And then you're proficient in spellcasting, so that's plus two. Plus, I have a plus three proficiency bonus. Okay. So that's six. Yeah. And then you have the plus one from the Umber staff, so it is actually plus seven. So 15 is your to dodge. Okay. Seven plus eight. Okay, so yeah. uh, that does not... I did not yeah. save. You have fireballed this boar. Okay. Hold on, hold on to your butt, boar. Well, I'll, and also, the, what and does also, the boar have to roll to hold on to its butt? And also, Magnus, hold on to your butt since you are, you're, oh. you're sort of your fate is kind of bound to this boar a little bit. Snap! Uh, I'm riding along next to him on Garrel. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Hey, who wants bacon? Okay. Nice. <laughs> I couldn't. I I sort of thought that's what you're doing, taking a long time, but yeah, it's no problem. Um. Griffin, will you edit out the five minutes of silence while Justin came up with that line? Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> uh, I do 33 points of damage. Fuck Whoa. me, running! Yeah, it's 8d6, the, homie. The boar's kids felt that. Yeah. Yeah, you uh, you set this boar on fire. Uh, this boar is now... Uh, it's, not, it's not on fire. It's on fire for a, a brief moment, uh, but it is definitely struggling. Uh, it seems very angry. Its armor is like superheated, and you hear it sort of sizzling. And there is actually kind of a nice smell in the air. Oh nice. wow, yeah, really? that's good eating. Pig roast. Put an apple in its mouth. Uh, uh, but yeah, he seems he seems like he's uh, like a stiff wind could knock this boar over. Uh, next in the order, though, is the, is the stiff wind. Is the stiff wind. <laughs> the boar falls over dead. No. Uh, next in the order is uh, the crate, and the crate. Waves at you. Actually falls apart. The walls of the crate and roof of the quake crate sort of just fall off the sides of the wagon. And it is basically just like a big flat bed uh, with a, uh, a a small component on the front or a small compartment in the front uh, where somebody is, is controlling the wagon. And on it are... Uh, three uh, humanoids of, of different races, and they're all wearing cricket masks. And two of them 
have uh, some some gnarly looking hand axes and big poles. And uh, those two are actually going to use those poles to sort of vault over uh, onto uh, your battle wagon. Um, one of them crits. That's a good jump. Uh, and the other one gets a 19. So they both make it uh, onto uh, the battle wagon. Uh, one of them lands sort of on the hood. Uh, and one of them sort of launches and uh, lands on the side of the car. It's like holding on to the windows on the right side of the car. The third one uh, uh, doesn't seem to have any sort of perceivable weapons. Uh, instead, they have a glowing purple orb. Uh, and uh, this this cricket person holds up this orb that starts pulsating with this light uh, and points a finger at you, Taco, in the back of the car. And you're going to need to make a uh, a wisdom saving throw. Okay. That is a three. Mm. Yeah. I think that's, that's a success. And that does it, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, it was oh, a great. two. It was a two. You needed to beat a two. Oh, so you great. Uh, great. No, actually, that is that is very insufficient. Um, Taco, you have been dominated. No, by this cricket person, and you uh, don't have any control over your body right now. Okay. Um, this cricket person does. You actually hear the sound of crickets in your head, um, mm-hmm. uh, and cool. you you. Uh, but you have no control over your body. You uh, hoist yourself up out of the gunner chamber where you are standing, um, and you unsnap your safety harness. Sweet. Okay. And you throw it off the side of the car. Okay, great. And is, then... Is the safety harness the thing that bubbles when you fall off, right? Uh-huh. Cool. And then you run and take a diving leap. Off Darryl. of the back of the car. That sounds like two actions. Uh, it's technically all movement. Uh, mm. and you move less than 30 feet. Uh, so you take off your safety harness and you just chuck yourself off of the back of the wagon. Um, and you, uh, you get a good leap. You're, you're, you're sort of flying backwards. Um, and uh, just as you hear Hurley shout, No! As she looks behind her, uh, you hear something. You hear, uh, uh, and from behind the uh, uh, shark tank, you see a stream of dust come up on you as you're flying through the air, again in bullet time, again in slow motion. Uh, And you're snatched out of the air like a foul ball by a gigantic furry hand and placed down into the sidecar of a motorcycle. And driving that motorcycle, you see Clark the bug bear. <gasps> Hell yeah! Who looks at you? Who looks at you and says, uh, "Wow, that was a close one, wasn't it?" MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Oh, hey there, everybody. I'm Guy Branham, and welcome to Pop Rocket, a new weekly show picking over the pop culture we all love to love. With me to talk TV, film, music, and anything else entertaining are journalist Margaret Wobbler, academic, writer, and DJ Oliver Wang, digital strategist Winter Mitchell, and comedian Santina Muha. It's an intellectual and incredibly snark-filled discussion about pop culture by five cranky Hollywood 30-somethings. No name-calling, no rudeness, just straight talk and a lot of role-play. I'm only 30-something for another year. Me too. And I don't <laughs> tell anybody I'm 30-something. Pop Rocket comes out every week from MaximumFun.org. 